What is good? We're back. We're ready to roll. Where's my sound bite? Where's it at? Where's ready to roll? We got bipod. Bipod OG. We've been grinding away through these post combine super flex tight end premium rookie mocks 1.5 premium uh and just today we're going to go through find you some dynasty moves to make here centered around where these rookies are going in a super flex startup mostly just want to give you an idea of where the market currently is on these values and these rookies of whether you should be buying selling or holding these picks if you're a rebuilding team you might want to go one way if you're a veteran you know competing team you might want to go another way so just I think this is a really good exercise to keep in front of the market. You don't even really need to know a ton about these rookies. If you have an idea of what the market and where your values are on things, you can really take advantage of it. So we think it's important to do these kind of things and these exercises, which if you've been fucking with us for a while, you know that uh, that this is what we do. So we're going to jump into it here. We're going to kind of skip past where the big seven is because it's super flex tight end premium. So that's, you know, Caleb, Marv, uh, Drake, May, Daniels, Neighbors, Rome and Bowers and we're going to jump in to kind of where the rest of that back end goes and see where they're around and give you an idea of what you could be possibly getting now again these are um, a sample of some mocks right after the draft so it's not a huge sample like we had for pre-combine um, but we've been grinding away we got three or four of them here for your pleasure um, and a variety of different people drafting these uh, as well as ourselves. So we feel pretty good about where some of these guys are going. And, and, and once again, I'm sure you'll get some comments of I need to be in some of these drafts. And that's just, yeah. you know, what? Like, well, come on, Bo. Yeah. Patreon.com slash AFF Dynasty. There's a free Discord channel now. Um, maybe we'll start dropping the, these mocks into that. But right. I don't know um, what you're looking at on the screen is, is ADP post combine. Uh, if you're listening on the podcast, make sure you go check out the YouTube video uh, because, you know, you can see the graphic. And then if you want access to this ADP, you got to sign up for the for the $5 holler pleasure chest. But that's the idea of Dynasty, man. There's there's values all over the place. And just because you have one thing and you think you're the rightest, I mean, you're in the right place because, you know, this space is just full of people who are just the most right and speak in absolutes. Ah. Um, but for here now, we're going to talk about what's in front of us and we want to kind of pick up. Around where the Brian Thomas ADP kind of picks up, which is uh, five twelve, which yoli, yoli, yoli. you know is, is is up quite a bit from where he was. He was kind of tied up in 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 the seventh ish round with uh, Troy Franklin and and maybe a little Xavier Worthy, but he's jumped up uh, about about two rounds or so. Um, and what's interesting here is all the guys above him: Jordan Addison, T Higgins, JSN, Zay Flowers, DK Metcalf. If I could, if I could move, I don't really doesn't matter where my team is on any part of if I'm a rebuild or whatever, I'm fine with moving whatever that is. One, eight, one, nine, depending on maybe where the quarterbacks end up. Like if JJ McCarthy goes top 15, maybe he's up there and there's going to be some people who love McCarthy and people who hate McCarthy. And if you get another quarterback in there, he could jump up. Uh, kind of in this mix as well. So take that for what it is. We'll talk a little J.J. McCarthy here in a second. But if I could move Brian Thomas and and move him up into any of those, that 5'7", 5'8", 5'9", 5'10", you know, into any of those guys. And, yeah, that's that's semi of around. I'm not going to say that's exactly what my rankings are, but, you know, somewhere around in the neighborhood, we're, we're knocking on the door. Now, obviously, JSN, um, you know, people, the 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 JSN haters are are hating right now because they 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 – They've been told that, well, maybe Lockett will get cut. Well, Lockett just redid his deal today. Oh, he did. And is, is two years for 30 million or something like that. So the JSN. What a bummer the for people, JSN. The people who are hating on JSN or, or whatever, which is odd because not a now, not a one of y'all. Not a nair none. Had, a, had him ranked outside the number one or not. You know, no, no, I'm sure somebody did. But like. You ain't no nair ho. And you kind of knew what it was with JSN, where he was going, and, and it, it was a bummer he got drafted there. There's two awesome players, and and it's Gino and, and the system that they run. Well, everything's about to be new, and yeah, we were hoping, but Tyler Locke is still like 34 years old, 33 years old. He's pretty he's 31. Old. Is he that? He's just 31. Is he? I'll pull it Double up. Double check that while we're I got going it here. here. Um, and real quick, if anybody knows the Trina lyrics to after what I said, and you ain't no hell, nah, ho, uh, you got to hit me in the comments section because that's... <laughs> That song is wild. Yeah. Uh, 
But if I could, if I could turn Brian Thomas, and I like Brian Thomas, he's fine. But I, I like all these guys are kind of known outside of JSN, and JSN's value might drop a little bit here. And thirty-one, you know, baby. I'm rarely wrong about what I think I'm right about. Yeah, I think he well, it might be 32 in season okay, potentially. Okay, all, so right, all right, all right. 32 years old, got a two-year deal. 34, you know, wasn't the strongest at the end of the season. I don't believe either. No, nah, but no, neither was Gino. Right, right. Well, now you got a whole new system, potentially a little more high flying, not as defense oriented, and 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 running the ball. Um, JSN out wide is a lot better than I thought. JSN was in the slot. Also, JSN was hurt to begin the season. Regardless. Maybe we could take JSN out of this because we don't exactly know where he's going to go. We've just had some some news and and that it's probably it could drop a little bit here. But yeah, um, well that's nice. That's a nice little buy window, it right? And some people will say must buy list. if he didn't hit We're these dynasty, if he didn't hit these thresholds in year one, then he can't be good. That's not. There's a lot of context. What did you that think was going to happen? And he, with DK it's and so Tyler wild. And, it's so wild that you had this guy was supposed to be so good and he checked all these boxes, but then after one year because it didn't go exactly how you wanted, and he's not a top five receiver. You're like, oh fuck it, I'm out. And it's just like y'all. Oh, this is dynasty, man. They're not it's playing crazy. dynasty. They're playing it's redraft. Crazy. I'll say one more thing about Brian Thomas and the rest of this tier. Generally speaking, when you're in a startup, and I think this might be a big co rule, you can the the sixth round of a startup is generally where you can trade your first round pick for. So uh, up and up into somewhere around the sixth t- until you typically. get to the top of that first. And obviously, depending on the year, that top first is worth the, might be a first round startup. Yeah, pick, some right? people might say four rounds, but I think I think so, it'll, once you're in the draft, sometimes it, it can extend to. Well, around one of the, the tricks of the trade is to send out your second round pick for like the seventh round. Some everyone's second rounder right off the rip, because if someone's dumb enough to take that, then you just made a bunch of money. To see Brian Thomas, what well, he he's probably one eight consensus in Superflex. One eight, one nine. I mean, some seems I, pretty I, consensus. In I, Brian like, Thomas I like. Now. I mean, Worthy's kind of nipping at his heels right here at yeah. six oh four. So some people have Worthy, some people have Thomas, and then if JJ gets drafted, he he, he could be up there. So um, I, I said well. all that to say it's good. That's good value on that pick, and if you can move it for one of these guys, generally speaking, I don't think that has that pick has that much value as it does right now. Right, and then you know Not that I don't love Brian Thomas. I mean, right. That's what that's what I let it off with. I like Brian Thomas. I like the idea of Brian Thomas. It's mystery box or these, and and these I just happen like to be done deal. really fun, good players that we kind of know what they are. Uh, maybe you don't love Zay, you know, maybe you have, you don't like one of those guys, but you can find a guy on that list that you like, and then you go up a little further and you can get a, a running back like Kyron Williams or Travis Etienne. I would, I would make that trade if I'm a competitor that now, now you got to be in a little bit different. You're probably realm. not getting Kyron for um, one, eight or nine, but you could try, you know, here, this is what the ADP is telling us. It's close enough to at least send it and try. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of my first takeaway um, to, to maybe get into that spot. Maybe Stefan Diggs is coming in here in the next tier below at 607. If I could move Stefan Diggs and, and get into that 1 8 spot, I think I would do that. Um, Diggs is just on a down trajectory. Now, if you're a winning team, you don't you probably don't want to buy him for the 1 8 necessarily, but if you could buy him for a little less, um, that would be great. But I don't think anybody's getting the 1 8. No, like I don't, I don't, I don't think so either, but I'm just people you know, are bailing for like seconds. And it's, it's close enough right here that you're at least as the ADP and where they've been drafted through four drafts or whatever. Um, you got digs close enough to Brian Thomas to maybe try to figure that out. And then maybe even Debo Samuel, who I like, and I think is a good player and scores ridiculous fantasy points when he's out there. Mm-hmm. But if you could, you know, if you could move Debo for a mid, First, I think I would be, you know, fine with that. And then maybe, I don't know if you could do that either. You no, probably, probably not. Both that. of those guys' values are depleted. Jaden Reed might be the one guy here that's kind of in yeah. the mix that you could probably re-roll, advance your pickup because you know, just like this year, last year had a treasure trove at two ten to three four, depending on who you picked, and Jaden Reed was normally uh one of those guys and if you wanted to rerun and it's not against it's not anything against Jaden reed there's a it's, lot going it's just, on there's there. just a lot going on there and they'll manufacture touches for him he's that kind of guy he can get you deep he can get you short he can do lots of stuff he's going to play the slot and you know we don't know exactly what it's going to be like with Trish christian watson we don't exactly know what it's going to be like with both of the tight ends healthy we don't exactly know what it's going to be like how what the rotation with wicks and dubs dubs you know is always has a little juice with with love there and and especially at the end of the season it was it was going pretty well so yeah it's, not, it's no great. shade on Jaden Reed but Plus if you, you wanted to re-roll tight ends and two good a good running game and scheme and right uh well 
I can tell you that the things you said about what might not be great for Jaden Reed moving forward, the people who love him already tuned you out and went down the comments, got mad, right? They're not even listening anymore. That's okay. But that tells you that Jaden Reed, with some people, has an immaculate amount of value. Like people go to the die on a hill for him for sure. So if you can capitalize off that and, and, and elevate up, not the worst idea. Right. All right. So scooting down this ADP a little bit here, we'll talk about JJ now, um, which I think he could easily be up in this fifth round if he gets the capital we're projecting right now. Dude, there. I feel like the smoke is starting way sooner this year. Like all this talk which is, is just not, gone you don't, you wild. Don't, you don't want to. You don't want to get too hot too quick because then by the time it's time, you're 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 descending. Uh, but they can't wait anymore. But it's too- between JJ, Penix, and Nix, somebody's probably going in that top fifteen. Maybe two of them. Um, and I don't know who that'll be. And so, so another quarterback could get up here, but JJ McCarthy, if you know, Kirk is obviously coming back from an Achilles. So it's a little bit of a bummer, uh, but you know, JJ McCarthy or Kirk cousins, I'm not a huge Car- McCarthy guy. I think he's fine. I think he can go into it with it, with a good team and, and game manage you. And he's, he's got a good arm and he can run around a little bit. Um, and I'm, I'm not mad he's at a JJ. Winner. He's a winner. Sure. Like that. Not mad at JJ McCarthy at all. Um, I like JJ McCarthy, but you know, would you rather have Baker Mayfield and 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 something plus or JJ McCarthy? Mm. I mean, it's tough to say right now before the draft. That's why I would never. Right. I don't want any rookie drafts before the, the quarterbacks. NFL draft. The quarterbacks, so especially with the and even then, it's fifty fifty. So right. I mean, I know Baker right. is going to get a starting job. So I wanted to just say, go ahead and give me something. What 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 can I get with Baker? You know, uh, but I mean, if they if he's the second quarterback off the board. Yeah, well, you know, and then if I if I could in add, a good situation, right? If which I could, that's not going to be the case. So, I, I mean, it could be you know somebody could trade up or whatever, but I mean, you know, if Minnesota grabs JJ McCarthy, you're probably yeah. a lot more excited. Or if the Seahawks grab JJ McCarthy, mm-hmm. you're, you're pretty mm-hmm. excited, right? Yeah. Uh, if the Raiders, you're like, ah, I don't know, right? You know, uh, you know or the Patriots. Yeah, the Patriots. It, he seems like a very Patriot quarterback. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, they have nothing over there. But for I, him. you know, I can't judge the court. I can't judge. We we don't know with the Patriots, so it's right. Un- I, we're, I, it's unfa- my jury's well, no, no. still out on Mac Jones, but like, the, it's the Patriots. Well, going to be that's a whole other discussion. I don't think Mac Jones is going to. They're going to probably trade Mac Jones. But th- what I'm saying is, that's I can't. What I'm saying. I can't he needs judge. Out of there. I can't judge the Patriots and where they're going offensively now. It's not Bill Belichick anymore. I've been liking what Mayo is kind of saying uh, and how they, they need to get more. And they brought Hunter Henry back. I think that's awesome for yeah. them. Great late Your round boy. stab uh, and tight end premium, especially. That's a guy who can get you 10 points every single week. Really, I guess maybe the biggest move would be I, I don't mind Kirk, but if I, I know nobody's going to like it. But if you could if you could fi- if you could get anywhere near JJ for Deshaun Watson, same thing with Brian Thomas. If you're super flex, which is what we're talking about and with the ADP. Brian Thomas or J.J. McCarthy to go and, and or to figure out how to go up to Watson, Deshaun Watson a little bit. When you said it, it was the opposite. You always, so um, I wasn't sure if you were trying to move off Deshaun, but I no. think Deshaun is a huge buy. And, and I know nobody likes that. And no, it was, it was it ugly. Like it wasn't fun. But Deshaun, you take out the games that he left with injury. I think he was averaging 18 points per game, man. Like the, the legs were getting it done. The legs he, were getting he scored it done. enough touchdowns, added, rushing touchdowns. He added Judy. I don't know what that's going to do. But, yeah. you know, you, you got you, you have a, a, a really, really good core there. Deshaun Watson was was, you know, it wasn't fun, it wasn't sexy, but his his floor wasn't bad at all, and it's you know he we know what the ceiling can be for Deshaun Watson. Will he get there? JJ McCarthy, bit of a question mark. So, and and is it my favorite? I'll I'll tell you that right off the rip. So other people might be saying no way. I'm not I'm not taking that nice young man for that <laughs> that terrible human being in Deshaun Watson. Um, but, you know, that's just where we're at right now. And I, I would probably rather have Deshaun Watson. Um, I, I have no problem starting Deshaun every week um, as moving forward. So let's keep it moving here. Let's go down to around the seventh round here. I found another little interesting area. We're, we're, this is where we're getting A.D. Mitchell, Troy Franklin, Lad McConkey, uh, And then right around there, you see Isaiah Pacheco poking his little head up. Uh, like it's Groundhog's Day. Is, 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 is he coming out? Is he not? Is he gonna see his shadow? But it's no. Again, no hate on Isaiah Pacheco. Very useful player. But if I could trade that seven nine right there, Isaiah Pacheco for any of those picks, the one ten, one eleven, one twelve, whatever those guys be, and maybe Lad's not up there for you, or maybe ADs, or maybe none of those guys are up there for you. But the idea is, I, I think that's about where those guys are right now, as far as rookie picks. Um, and that's how they kind of formulate out in this draft. So if I could trade the 110, you know, a late first for Pacheco, I'm doing so. 
Um, I, it's, it's no shade on Pacheco. I think he's a good player, very startable. Uh, but I think I would rather take the shot at one of those wide receivers. Um, you're, you're getting. A I'd be big, interested if you could get that. Uh, yeah, I would too. The ADP suggesting. Can you I get a late one for Pacheco? I don't know if you can. Somebody might. Somebody might be like, all right, well, he's earned his stripes. Here we go, and they don't have to pay him. I think for two more years. I and don't I think. can't imagine they spend any significant capital on someone else. You know, right. So, but. On the same side of things, like if I'm the rebuilder and I had Pacheco sitting around, if I can figure out a way to get one of those guys, I will. On the other side of that, if you go down to 710 there, or um, let's see, uh, 775 rather. If you go up to 75, you see Tajay Spears there. I would probably trade just about any one of those guys to get Tajay Spears uh, on my team. So I would, tr- you know, if I could, if I had the 110, 111, 112 and could, could acquire Tajay Spears. I would, you know, this is a guy who came in and ran, ran, uh, the GM is, is backing him saying he's, he's a Titans kind of guy. And he caught damn 50 balls rookie year, uh, and was just awesome. You know, whether or not you keep him or not is fine, but I think the rise of Tajay Spears is going to be great. And, and, and I love Ladd McConkey and I, and I don't, I, I think he's great. And I like AD Mitchell and I like Troy Franklin, but uh, for 52 me, fifty-two balls on seventy targets. If I could buy uh, Tajay Spears with the, one of those late round picks, good yards per carry too. Yeah, I I certainly would. So kind of an either side of things there, selling the seven nine and Pacheco for one of those things, buying Spears uh, for any of those things. Um, Bryce Young's kind of in there. That, that that's an interesting pickup if you're if you're feeling froggy late a late first for any of those guys for Bryce Young, also could be a, a possible option. George Pickens. Um, kind of in there if you're feeling Pickens maybe some you know there's enough negativity on Pickens and enough you know, it's 50 house divided on Pickens uh, but I like Pickens people are coming around I've seen seen some people come around some people will never come around because that's not who they are uh, but you know if you could sure if you could change uh, one of those late round picks into Georgie Pickens yeah um, I think I'm down wouldn't wouldn't be the worst idea either may, I, I, wait till after the draft let's see who's going where and what what it is uh, right but I'm I mean, interested I I I love I've I've seen enough for Pickens. I mean, he's a little bit of a head case. I think you know. Can he keep it together? Because he can ball. I don't care about the separation. I mean, right. separating fine. He's awesome. Maybe I'm, the stats don't back that up, but he it doesn't matter. Like when, you, when your eyeballs watch him, which I know some people don't like, but you know he's he's can be a, a his ridiculous body difference and maker. Catching contortion is the separation. I mean, he's just right. incredible. Yeah, he's and if he's, he just keep it together. If he can just keep it together, he's a whole lot of fun. But he hasn't solidified anything, so he's still available, and it's still a little risky, just like all these rookies. But you have at least seen him operate at a high level on on an NFL field. Now, some people would argue that I don't. Um, and Tajay Spears the same thing. So it's mystery box again towards something that could be a little bit more proven, but isn't proven and hasn't peaked. He's in its wide value. receiver twenty three last year. Yeah, it was ridiculous at the end of the strong. Season. Once, uh, once Mason was in there and they they got rid of the OC. Which so. I don't know why down here it says positional rank 30th if he was wide receiver 23. But, but now you got Arthur Smith there. We'll see what happens. Deontay Johnson maybe potentially on the move. Some some rumors about him getting traded. That's like all the time. Uh, yeah. So it's basically you know the Broncos finally did it. Uh, they finally, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> they finally got it. Um, and that's another interesting one in here because Mims is 14-3 right now in our ADP post combine. Uh, but he'll certainly be screaming up the charts in the next, you know, he'll, he'll be 10th, 9th rounder all day long, which brings me right into, I think, which brings me right in, if not even higher, like maybe in this round of where we're kind of talking about these guys. So sell window is potentially open on Mims if you want to recoup or if you were feeling Mims, if you're. Uh, if your model was really supporting Mims, then then you're all in, and, and they cleared space for him, so the narrative is fitting. Go all in on Mims. I don't really have a, a lean one way or the other. I didn't mind Mims coming out. I like middle of the second for Mims last year, and you didn't really see a whole lot to tell me any which way the explosiveness like a was couple there. Plays, right. yeah. He had some explosiveness, so yeah. I'm fine with holding him. I'm also fine with, hey, if he got up to this area – where you could re-rack for, and you liked Ladd or AD or one of those guys that we were just talking about, you certainly could. But I think he's going to kind of move up into this, at, le- at the very least, 10th round range, four-round jump here real quick. Uh, but a second-round pick, maybe even late late, uh, late second, early third, Josh Downs right now is going at the 210. Um, if I could... Two, if, wait, 12-10? The 10-2, sorry. Ten um, two. I was looking at one thing saying another. 
Uh, Josh Downs going at 10-2, wide receiver 46. And then right around in that area, you got Blake Corum, Jonathan Brooks. Uh, you got Braylon Allen a little further down there, which, you know, we'll, we'll talk about all those guys. But, you know, if, if, you could do, if you could move Josh Downs for anything around the 2-1, 2-2, 2-3 area, I'm I'm down to do that all day long, which the ADP seems to be suggesting you might be able to do that. ADP and rookie drafts sometimes do not fucks. Um, you know, sometimes there is a little bit of a difference there, and, and, yeah, and there really isn't a great rationale. There's some psychology there. Like, you like to say that it all just kind of goes right, but it doesn't right. always go that way. You take this guy in the startup, but you wouldn't trade him in the rookie pick, you know? Right. So I, the and, reason why Josh Downs is there in this ADP is because if you pass on wide receiver early and it seems like everybody just keeps hammering wide receivers. And I, I noticed this when I decided to take a, like several quarterbacks early and tight ends and tight end premium. And I got, I grabbed Jameer Gibbs and Kenneth Walker and Najee Harris. And I just kept passing on all these wide receivers that I didn't like necessarily the value. And then it's like, okay, well now I need some wide receivers. Who am I going to take? Right. It's like old ass dudes or, Right. Josh Downs. Depending on you know, how your build's going, you might want to do one thing or the other. He's sitting there at the top of the wide receiver queue. He probably shouldn't be going there, but because there's no wide receivers, just a weird range of wide yeah. receivers there in the middle. So he was at 9-9. Nine, nine. He dropped down to 10-2 post-combine. So some guys, you know, kind of definitely went up and, and uh, got in front of him. But, you know, and this could go the other way as well for any of your old like Amari Cooper or Keenan Allen or uh, you know if you want to get rid of any of those guys it could be your time right here um, but I was kind of looking Josh Downs was the one that caught my eye there and if I could trade any of the 2-1-2-2-2-3 for that pick I think that's that's a, a nice little return a you nice little trade Josh Downs for that pick right that's a nice little re-roll nice little re-rack um, and it's not again I like Downs I think Downs could be worth way more than that but he should be at, more of a value than that. At this point, that's like he's reached some potential right. and he Even has if, shown well. You know, I mean, I can't right. knock that's, him. My it's, man. I think Downs is good. I, I just that that's that's in Brooks or Benson range when you're in a draft like that. That's in potentially A.D. Mitchell if he slides a little. Right. Drafts There's going to be a Troy running Franklin back or, and wide receiver. Right. If, if you tasty. like Jalen Wright or or, or uh, Marshawn Lloyd, those guys could be up there. So if you can if you can figure out a way to flip. Um, one of those old wide receivers or somebody like uh, Josh Downs in that area, I am perfectly okay with that. Yeah, I mean, if if J.J. McCarthy gets the draft capital, they're, they're smoke screening right now, then he just made all your rookie picks even worth more. Right. You know, and, he just got get, jumped add, right into add the mix. One, You get another quarterback that goes in the first round. Right. Or second, first pick of the second day, and it's Knicks or Penix or whatever, and people like him, he, they're going to end up going in the back of the second, too. Or back of the first two. Right, just um, elevating that early second, late first round pick value more than it already right. is. Uh, so, you know, and then you could throw Mims in there. If you wanted to re-rack Mims for 2-1 or, or a late, like I said, one of those late first or, or a late early second there with the Brooks, the Benson, uh, all that, I think I think that would be At least fine. two of those running backs are going to be hot fire sure. a couple months from now. Mm-hmm. So, again, we're, we're, we're just trying to find – the differences of maybe more what we're seeing the value and then some of these are even going to go up even more uh, like you're saying as as things approach it and especially once we get draft capital um so we'll have post uh, nfl draft adp for your pleasure Is draft as well. capital on the board i don't think so uh, so but if we keep scrolling we go down another round or so now we get to braylon allen now we get to jalen wright now we get to marshawn lloyd which i've been taking late 11 12th round in, in, in all these post combine startups that we've been doing um and on on one side you have guys like b rob and swift aaron jones you know do you want any of those guys b rob seems like a, and swift both seem like you know I've been deep Strong in the rookie players. sheets. Has Aaron Jones done anything with his contract? Have they said anything about him? I don't think so. I think there, there's a lot of tentative that yeah. they may be doing something, trying to maybe? doing something with his contract. Because if nothing, he stays, nothing then I'm that all I've seen. in with my man Aaron Jones. Right. I mean, scenario. he's staying this year. I don't think he's going anywhere. I don't think they're going to cut him. I think they have like an out, but why would you? Right. You know, when he plays. <laughs> right. AJ a- Dillon's out of there. I, I believe. Well, he's but, but, fairly irrelevant at this point. R.I.P. So, you know, do you want Jay, you want to take the shot on Jalen Wright? So I think you can go either way here, depending on what your team is. If you have Swift and you got some value bump back from him and you wanted to try to trade Swift in for 
at, you know, Raylan Allen, if that's your flavor, or if Jalen Wright's hanging around or Marshawn Lloyd, one of those guys is your flavor. Um, and so, you know, if you could move Swift or Aaron Jones, an old forum, uh, maybe, you know, Judy just got a little value bump here. So, you know, maybe, maybe Judy, let's see where his ADP is in general. So it's 12, four now before he got moved. Now you get a little the, is it a perceived? Are people going to like that? I don't know. So if it's if if you get any perceived value bump at all for Judy, Judy plus it's to definitely tr- to try to get into that early second somehow, you know, and grab one of those guys. I'm not sure if you can do that. A Jamison Williams re-roll if you're not into him right here wouldn't wouldn't be a terrible. Uh, Let me roll spot Ju- Judy into Jamison. Well, yeah, you could. I don't think people are going to like that. the Judy thing because they already don't like the Browns. They don't like Deshaun. Amari Cooper is there. Njoku is is coming into his own finally and this is definitely bad for elijah uh, elijah moore and tillman and bell who else <laughs> you know all right. these pieces that have been dpj is not there anymore but pieces that we've been intrigued with it definitely squashes those guys i feel like yeah. elijah moore's adp is probably going down but i don't know that people are gonna like that for judy i mean i guess it couldn't get any worse right but it was still 12 something so maybe you get a little bump at plus you know, add something to it. Maybe you could get into this range. You know, a JMO world, like I was saying, whether you like him or not. You know, oh, he's Cor- just coming on. Don't get off Cortland, JMO right now. Cortland, so, well, I'm just right. Say, can't so, be getting off JMO right now. I, it's it's not for me. Ooh, it's, it's for everybody else. It's, people, it's like bubbling under the surface. Maybe right. People, but people like I feel it. Want to? If you want to get out, this is a shot. Jahan Dotson potentially. You know, you could. He's oh, at eleven. QB situation. He's at eleven like eight. Sure, Dotson's I, a buy. He, he. This is. And I that, like I like him, but what I'm saying is, is some people like to re-roll it because it's make, and then this is yeah. a shot to well, do so. Dawson doesn't have this value. This is because wide receivers are scarce when you get to this part of the draft. That's why all these wide receivers shouldn't be this side. But there's, it's like if you well, need one, you know. On the other side of that, and Cortland Sutton just lost Judy, and Mims comes in, so maybe mm. you could do something for Sutton to change it into a to a high end second round somehow. Maybe it's not just that, but and I, you know maybe or Sutton's buy gone. Sutton. Maybe Sutton's gone. Well, they got to keep sure. Him. Um, not don't buy them right now. Right. Wait a minute till when they forget, and then Sutton um, might be. This is great for Sutton. B Rob's the interesting one here for the Redskins or for the Commanders here. <laughs> he he's a little bit up above a couple of these guys, but you know I I I'm not, I'm kind of on the fence on what to do there. Whether he's whether I'd rather re rack it into a Lloyd Allen or or right here or or roll again with Brian Robinson. Going into this year, but but on the other side of things, let if, me get the re, let me re roll that. Thing. If you want to sell one of these high end first or uh, high end second round picks to to you know two one to two four, like I think you know once again Deontay Johnson is in this range here, um, which I, I have no problem buying if you're a little bit more into a competitor and you don't want the mystery box, you want to take some of it out of it. It's not as sexy. You're not getting as younger. Your roster's not winning beauty contests, which is what it's all about now. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Well, he's only 27 well, yeah. I, right now, right. anyway. I, and I mean, he's the one guy because I waited on wide receivers and I took him in one of these three drafts for sure. I waited and he was one of the ones I was like, I feel comfortable taking him at his age at this part at this place. I know what I'm getting in him. Yeah. And you know, I probably should have reached for one of the rookies, I guess. You know, but I, I was like, I like this. this right. So I, I'm okay with that right there. And so you know, Calvin Ridley right there as well. The reception perception on him is is very good. There's some things that weren't great, but I think he's coming back to Jacksonville. If I had to guess, um, and I, I think Calvin Ridley, yes, he's 28 or 29, but doesn't have two years on there and was was pretty good for his first year back and what he wasn't as good as expectations that some people we started off out hot for. too though yeah but then then was better at the end of the season they moved him around a little bit more got him out of the slot just missed some touchdowns got him too. out of got him out of solely being out wide um and moved him around and, and i don't know how he have eight touchdowns or something like that. he he could have easily had 12 to 15 touch like there's a whole reel of him you know, missing and dropping some touchdowns, whether it was Trevor just off or him dropping them. Uh, but he's still wide receiver 17 on the year and and uh, still still has some juice. So if you want to get off of one of those those early seconds, I, I, I would say that's about the round of these running backs that we were talking about. Where, 136 where kind of targets. That's yeah. phenomenal. Right. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're talking tight end premium and my boy Komet here. Uh, if, if you can re-roll the high end two into Komet, I would do that all day long. Um, you know, I know I 
there's a lot of variance on Komet when we do drafts, and I'm in a, I'm in pretty much every single one that we do, so there's only so far I can let my man go. Um, <laughs> he took a pie to the face for him, and he's still just... And I got, I got, repping. I backed off of him a little bit last year, but now well, I'm, I'm, on I'm all the way back in. And like I said, last year, DK had a little bit of a down year, but he was within striking distance in 1.5 of DK Metcalf. Um, he doesn't get the respect he reserves. He's got a new quarterback coming in um, and he, he's 24 years old, man. Yeah. Uh, so I, that, that he would be a guy, he's a little up, he's at 10, four. So he's about around above those guys, but I, I think that might be our ADP. I don't know where he is with everybody else because I'm driving that up. Um, so if you could, if you could trade him for the like, Komet is a, is a fantastic, uh, and then I'm I'm fine with flexing out a guy like in 1.5 yeah, like, like Komet as sure. well instead of the mystery box. Once again, a lot of this comes down to do you want the sexy roster and what could be, or do you want uh, things that you already know. And and that's the fun part about this. And I know guys who almost never make their rookie picks and they do great. I know guys that make their rookie picks and they do great. Uh, it's all about finding the values, trading around. And I, I want to be somewhere in the middle of those things. I don't want to have, I don't want to make all the, I want to get a lot of picks and own a lot of picks if, if I can. Uh, and then I want to systematically figure out how much value I can get for those picks. Sometimes I go into drafts, I got a bunch of picks and I end up making a bunch of them. Sometimes I go into drafts with the intention of making all these picks and I come out of it with fucking, you know, CMC and this guy and this guy. And it's like, Oh, I guess, I guess I'm competing right now. Let's go. Uh, cause I got the value was the value was right on, on, on these guys. And I turned a, a really good profit. So you never know who's going to have what value, you know, and, and that's what my main beef with some of the comments in the, in the comment section. It's like, I need to get in some of these, like, I need to get in these drafts. You know, this, these guys don't know what they're doing. It's like, have you ever been in a real draft with like your friends or like, you know, any draft you just, you never know where someone's right. value is going to lie. And when I mean, you're in, in the rookie in a $500 draft, $500 draft, then people be doing dumb shit. Right. You know, well, that's cause like, they, those people probably just don't care about that money. So they just, maybe, but, but I'm just saying, you know, like, there's probably very few get, people like saving up their money to get in a $500 draft. You can go from 20 draft, to you know? 500 and, and still catch right. some dinguses. A lot less dinguses and a lot less, uh, you know, ridiculous well, trades. Well, it's frivolous with bullshit their... Bullshit done. You're not going to win for a while. And now <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get your money. So I don't have a... It's just how bad did it go in the other direction. But um, you never know where these values are going to lie. And, and when you get in that rookie draft, it's important, man, to have a long clock. Have a 12-hour clock on your... Have a, at least 8-hour clock that pauses at midnight on your rookie draft. That way you can find the people yeah. that... Because you never know. Like, you might have this pick and you might be waiting for this guy to fall. And if he fell, you'd smash that. Just wait. But... Wait a, wait a couple hours before you even make that pick. Just like yeah. see if you get in. Because some people will just send you an offer. And you never know if that offer, like, you might have been dead set on taking that guy at that pick. And you get some crazy offer, you know. Or yeah. maybe you, you, who's being active? Go after him. Try and get more than what you should, you know. And, and it's just staying on top of it and being fluid. You can't just. People right. are like, I got these picks. I'm thinking about taking this guy here. And then I'm going to take this guy here. I'm going to take this guy here. It's like settle Shop down. Shop around your league and see what the settle value down. of your league will give you for these guys. Don't before get I go dead getting set on dead anything. Per yeah, you can't be. You cannot yeah. be. Uh, you got to be You got to be fluid, especially when you got a lot of assets. And and the last thing I'll say to wrap up this show here, I talked to Big Cole a little earlier today because I was having a little brain fart. Um, and he was saying, you know, what What I would bring up on a moves to make is is – you know, you don't have to really listen to everything that's going on right now. There's big accounts out there who uh, in, in the past have tweeted out that, you know, this this is the you have to be this size, this frame and fit into these boxes to be good. And then all of a sudden these last two, three classes come through and everything changes. All the goalposts move. There's no way anybody. All the shit. They're all shit. They're good. These guys are good. Uh, so right now we're at the point of things where everybody's telling you that. The 24 class sucks and trade for the 25. It's the most predictable thing that happens every single year. Last year ended up being awesome. It was really good. Same jokers were probably telling you that that class sucked too. You could have rebuilt your whole damn team in one draft if you if you hit it right. Um, and this year's shaping up to be the same. That that 3-1 to 3-4 or 5 is probably going to have some really good super flex item premium. Probably going to have some really good players in it. Um you know, are, should you be chasing Puka and Tank? No, you shouldn't be chasing those guys, but you should be doing the work. You well, be don't be out on out. them because just because they were fifth round but, wide receiver well, or just because they were small. That's basically, the because they didn't away from that. They don't check these. Bo Lad McConkey didn't have this, this or this. So there's no way he could be good. No early Xavier, production. on my Xavier Leggett can't be this good because it's like, Super well, there's, also, there's also context around all these things. So before you go getting out 
and being so steadfast and aggressive and and saying no i'm not taking these guys because this and i'm not those guys are really smart all these these you know i'm not not knocking any of them they're they're smart guys that crush uh and i respect them and i and i i want to know all that information but don't just go writing guys off because they don't fit in this box that you saw you know this tweet come out of is is how i'll wrap this one up so uh we appreciate you guys Please check us out on the Discord. Real quick, one point. Uh, everybody likes to early declare, and if you look at the top 22 dynasty wide receivers and you look at whether how many of them were early declares versus not, it's 13 to 9. To me, that's not a big enough difference to be like, got to be an early declare. Right. I'm out on the late the late declare, you know? Right. It's like that. sometimes that's the margin that people are playing, right. you know? Trying to get better than 50%. Like, I think I could do that by watching my man, you know? Like... I don't know. We're about to get deep into these stats, though. I'm like, I'm yeah. been preparing these player pages and putting all this data together so we can have our own metrics. And the last piece of the puzzle is to figure out all the thresholds. And I'm having a tough time figuring out all the thresholds. Some people give you the thresholds. Some people don't. Sometimes it needs to be a conglomerate of like five stats together with certain thresholds. Right. And then, you know, we'll get on the train of, of, uh, tinkering with those numbers just right to find who's every who's everybody that was good and then there's also puka on that list you right. know okay they're all pieces of puzzles with with context that need all need to be applied to each other um to to right. make this whole thing work there is no real cheat code they're going to keep reverse engineering and dialing this in the goal posts get moved every year because this guy makes it and this guy doesn't and the, then they they reverse the yards, those things the, so the, the first downs Per route run versus zone coverage is now the Puka stat, right? They had to find one that was like, okay, this is why Puka was good. The contested target rate. How many how many of your targets were contested? That's the Nikhil Harry stat. They had to find that one to be like, man, he was in a not he was a can't miss guy. Yeah. There's gotta be some stat. Oh, there's that. And so every year there's like a new stat of yeah. how you could be good or bad. And that's how this that's how processes like this work. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying, like, before you get carried away with before you just go be somebody staunch as fuck. right before you go writing somebody off look around add some context do a little bit of work yourself um and, and see what you're feeling what you like what you're thinking um and again it's it's, it's no shade uh, you know, no shade on analytics at all it's a very necessary piece i want to know all about it i want to know everything i can because they're all little bits and pieces but don't just go writing somebody off because of two silly things or whatever and and uh that's really it size draft capital yeah early declare three cone drill <laughs> hey i like a good three cone drill. i mean everybody a dot. but you know we've that, that was the prehistoric metrics days when they were first getting on the scene you know had to be these silly tests and it's like now almost nobody really gives a shit too much about the tests is except roman dude he cared a lot things. about that three cone well, drill, but yeah, uh yeah shout out to my man rome so, all right, boys and girls, we appreciate you. We'll catch you next time. Be sure to hit us up with the five dollar holler on the Patreon. You get three extra episodes a month. You get the Discord. We're, we're about to. We're getting. Jay Wayne's been deep in them sheets, building player pages for rookie stuff to have all that information right at your little fingertips and ours. Uh, get in these mock drafts with us. We also give them to other Discord channels that are that we've reached out to within our community. Um, and we throw them out to the Twitter community. So follow us at, at the FF Dynasty. We're go, we go live every other week to do a startup as well. So lots and lots of good stuff that there's no reason that you shouldn't be following the channel. Uh, we've also up for Charleston City Papers uh, Best Of. So. Best local podcast. Someone nominated us. We didn't even have to grind for that. We just ended up on the list, baby. Let's Help go. us get to the party. Go to the city paper, Charleston City Paper. Google it. Best local podcast. You can then, vote once a day. Oh, I nice. Figured, I figured on the my, same account. My brother is up for uh, the best bartender in Charleston, and he told me. Oh, that seriously? You could, that you nice. could vote for. Um, oh, Bob. Hey, Bob. Give me one day. One a day, Bob. He got some rumple and. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck it. Couple of <laughs> couple of werewolf killers. Shout out to the vest. Those are course lights in case you're. When's the vest of it? It's like summer. It's like deep in the middle May of summer. May 17th. That's his birthday. Kick off the summer. All right. All right. Vest of us for the rest of us. That's right. All right. We'll catch y'all next time. Peace. <clears throat> Peace. <laughs>